Hello? Famous, famous decorator TV network? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I make, I make magic sunshine curtains. You, you, would I show you how? You want to put them in like a kid's room? Oh, they would be spectacular for that. Yeah, okay. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, well, I'll show you how to do the magic sunshine curtains because they dress up any room and they let the sunshine in. Don't forget, I'm Kathy and this is Sewing Tech Talk. So today's giveaway, we have this great tote, this Notions tote, courtesy of Arrow Sewing Furniture, the spirit of sewing. So every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win this fun tote. It's great for holding all your little notions and helps you organize your sewing room. So like, share, or comment, lucky winner gets the sewing tote. Thank you, Arrow Sewing Furniture. So in my sewing room, I don't know if you've watched the videos before, but I have the director and the director is always in here helping me sew even when I'm not filming a video. And so I decided to install a cat TV. What's a cat TV? Well, it's a bird feeder right outside the window. And oh my gosh, you would think I installed the bestest thing ever because he's always there watching the birds. It just costs a little bit of bird seed. So I decided that I needed a curtain because when I walk in the room, if the birds see me through the open window, they fly away. And I kind of like to see the birds too. So I decided I wanted a magic sunshine curtain that lets the sun shine through, has some fun little things, little add-ons add that I could have some sort of a visual, block the vision of the birds to me, but I and the director could still see them. And it kind of gussies up the sewing room. So today, let's make a magic sunshine curtain using some sheer fabrics and to sandwich between the layers to make some interesting parts of that curtain, I have some fun little stuff. I have some leftover thread. This is the thread from when I do embroidery. I tuck the leftovers into this dollar, um, dollar store um, tissue container. Holds them really great. I have some sequins. You know, I want to add some lace. You can even add little silhouettes that maybe you cut out of with a scan and cut or something like that. So you can add all kinds of fun little stuff to the layers between the sheer fabrics, but just make sure you can sew through it because what we're going to do is we're going to layer it between the two and then sew through it to kind of hold it in place because gravity is going to want to take it out. So having said that, sheer fabrics. Sheer fabrics are available in all kinds of fabric stores and the polyester organza, really inexpensive. I even have some vintage uh, dotted Swiss that I'm going to use in my curtain just because I think I like the way it looks. You can get fabric that's a little bit more opaque, a little bit more transparent. You could even get fun fabric that has little um, embellished little designs put on the top of it. Really kind of fun. This is not an expensive project, but I think it's going to be fun, especially when the sun wants to beat in. It's a south facing window and in the summertime I really like appreciate a little bit of shade coming in the room. So let's talk about making some layers. I have some ideas for that. And today I'm going to use the Baby Luck Celebrate Serger to do the seam of the sheer fabrics. And then I'm going to sew the seam down with a straight stitch on the sewing machine. Now, why did I choose a serger for this job? Well, sheer fabrics are great. They're not very expensive, but they kind of have a mind of their own. They kind of want to fly away. They kind of want to slip over the top of each other. And a serger, well, a serger really controls those fabrics. So the Baby Lock serger, the Celebrate that I'm going to be using, self-threading serger, easy if I want to change thread colors for the different panels that I'm going to put together. And it's really going to control those fabrics. The additional benefit for using the serger is it has this beautiful quarter inch seam. After I sew it on the serger, I'm going to sew it down using the sewing machine and it kind of looks like leaded glass. It's really cool and it gives me a really neat effect. So let me talk about doing the layering of the panels. What I have is I have a piece of white 
of polyorganza. Now this stuff doesn't like to iron so much. So I have a few little creases in it. I think that's going to hang out and be okay. If I needed to take those out, I could put it in a, a warm dryer. Um, or maybe spray with a little bit of water, hang it up. I have some ideas for that for you. I have a handout that talks about the procedure that I'm going to be going through today. So to get the handout, go to the description down below. It's usually highlighted in blue and it's there with all my other handouts. So maybe you'll get some extra information that maybe I can't fit in the video. One thing I'd like to do is uh, just sprinkle some fun stuff. I have just some sequins. You can cut up some leftover organza. Uh, here's some thread that I can put on there. But what I thought would be really cool, especially since it's a curtain, is what if you did some sort of a kind of a design in there? What if you made, uh, put uh, your little embellishments in between and made it look kind of like a tree? Or here is a, another picture picture that I took. Something kind of fun in the middle in there. If you have an embroidery machine, you could do an embroidery and have the sun shine through and that would be really spectacular too. But the process of making just a generic one, pretty pretty simple. So let's just take some fun stuff and then let's just do that. So here's some thread. Now the thread, you can see you have to be very precise with it. I'm just going to cut it up and put it on my, on my um, piece of, of organza. Just going to take some sequins, sprinkle them on. Now on the handout I give you a list of supplies, but there's one supply I didn't list and that's a vacuum cleaner because some of this stuff is going to escape and you might be finding it five years down the road in your carpeting of your sewing room, but just say that be prepared some of it's going to escape. So I'm going to take some fun stuff, put it on here, maybe another different color, and just have some fun with it. I want, I have it on, um, this is as a light box, and this is a daylight uh, wafer light box, and it shows through so I can see how I have created my little um, embellishment with my different threads. This would be very key if I was trying to do a picture. Also, if you have one of those extension tables, it's really helpful in holding this flat when I'm getting ready to sew it. But if it's a clear one, you can get a light that if you have a, if you have a sewing machine with a USB or if you have a, the USB um, port or light uh, receptacle port, you can uh, put that there and it'll shine the light through the bottom of the sewing extension table. So that's kind of a two for one. I kind of like that. But if you want to do a picture, if you want to see how it's going to be, it's really kind of helpful to have the, uh, the light box to show through to see what you've done. So I can add more to this, but basically all I need to do is take my second piece and then just lay it on the top. Now, I'm not using any spray adhesive, you can, but what I'm basically just going to do is I'm just going to take some nice pins. I'm using some fine pins because one thing about sheer fabrics is they may snag. So I'm just going to put some pins and I'm going to put a whole bunch of pins in there and I'm going to gently, carefully take it on over to the machine to do some stitching on the top of it. But while I'm here at the table, so I don't have to come back, I want to show you my technique for joining two pieces of shear once I get it all done. So we'll put this aside for just a second, and I want to show you how we're going to control these fabrics at the serger. So here's two pieces that I'm going to put together. Now, I cut my panels and I make the seams very, very generous maybe over an inch because I'm going to cut that away with the serger. And usually when I use a serger, uh, when I'm at the serger, I use wonder clips to hold my piece together. But this seam is so large, I generally just use the pins and I make double sure I take them out before I come to them when I'm surging because you don't want to surge over a pin. So here's the fun technique. I take a ruler, Here's my seam that's going to be here, and I have a, a, uh, I have a Sharpie. Basically just a pin that's going to give me a good uh, line. 
And what I'm going to do is I am going to draw a line on the fabrics that I'm going to be able to see when I'm at the serger. Now, I'm going to draw right over the top of this and I've not had it, I have not had it bleed through, but do be careful if you are doing it on a precious surface. Um, I don't want you to mark something that doesn't come out. Actually, this comes out with alcohol, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a line. Now, where do I mark the line? I'm going to mark the line where I am going to cut with the serger and the seam, the actual seam is going to be a quarter inch in. So keep that in mind when you're putting your panels together. So all I'm going to have to do is take this. I'm going to make sure that everything is straight and I'm just going to take the pin and I'm going to mark my line. Got it? Now, when I go to the serger, I'm going to see that line and I'm going to use the blade to cut along there and create a perfect quarter inch seam. Why did I come up with this technique? Well, like I said, sheer fabrics get squirrely. The serger handles them very well. But when I'm getting ready to join the other panel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on there and I can use my ruler to make sure that everything is straight. It's really a cool trick if you want to have everything come out just square. So let's get over to the serger. What I'm going to do is take this over. We're going to sew some lines on my, my it's here somewhere. Oh, here it is on my uh, embellished panel. And we're going to sew this together. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to come up with a really cool seam that you could use not only on this curtain, but if you're doing any sheer fabrics, it's a very elegant seam. So I'll meet you over there. We're going to do the Celebrate Serger and we're going to sew on the Vesta. So we've came over to both the Baby Lock Vesta and the Baby Lock Celebrate Serger. We're going to use both for this project. First, we're going to sew our perfect seam with the Baby Lock Celebrate. We have to thread it first. And then we're going to use the straight stitch on the Vesta to stitch it down and get that really cool leaded glass look. So let's get this serger threaded. To thread it, I'm going to press this button, turn the wheel on the side till the machine finds its happy place. Then all I need to do is take the thread, stick it in the threading port, and push down the lever and it's going to thread the looper for me. Pretty cool, right? Let's do the upper looper. I tell it to do the upper looper. Stick the thread in the threading port. <laughs> Ta-da! Now if it threads your loopers, of course it's going to thread your needles. I'm really just using the one. I'm doing a three thread wide stitch, so I only have the left hand needle in. So I'm going to release it and bring that needle threader over to the left hand position. Take my thread, push this down, and it's going to literally pull that thread through the needle. And just as fast as you can say, let the sun shine in, I am threaded up and ready to go. Like I said, it's a three thread wide. Now, remember over at the table, what I did is I put my line for cutting right along the side of this fabric. And I am using pins, which I don't like to use with a serger. So we're going to make super careful uh, be super careful and we're not we're going to take the pins out as we go so let's th th thread everything on up get it everything going and find our foot control and I'm going to be cutting right along this line Now what I have is I have a medium kind of stitch length. I have it like just a little bit over the number two and I have it cutting as wide as it can. I'm going to take these pins out as I come for, to them. I don't want to surge over a pin. So there is that three thread wide seam. And what's going to happen, I'm going to pull this open, take, come over to the sewing machine, and I'm going to stitch this down. I don't know if you can see it. I'll put my hand behind it. And you can see that it's going to be a really cool, like, remember what we're doing with the curtains is we're creating areas that are darker and lighter. When we have the sun shining through, that's what we're going to see. During the day, we'll see the color. But when the sun comes through, we're going to see the density. So that's going to be great. That's going to be perfect. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to show you how I stitch together my little um, uh, crumbs under glass, basically. Pull this over. 
and I've changed the Baby Lug Vesta over to sewing. And I've gotten started just a little bit here. So for any of the panels that you do, I have my layers together. Now, I don't have the extension table on the machine right now because I don't really have room. But an extension table is super helpful because when you're sewing this together, you want it to lay kind of flat so that things aren't falling out. They will fall out. So all I have to do is I have it set up for a straight stitch. I'm literally just going to take it under there. Now you can sew this in any kind of pattern that you want. You can just do parallel lines. You can do a grid. Actually, I've changed machines over to do a, a free motion stitch and I did little swirls. I found that when I do a free motion stitch, it gives me a little puffy texture and I kind of like that. In fact, I've done an entire garment with that and I'll show you that at the end of the video. I'm pretty proud of it. It's really two layers of sheer fabric taken to the next level. I hope you agree. So let's just sew on this. I'm just sewing the uh, layers together with the cool stuff in the middle. <laughs> Remember, you want anything that you can sew through is fair game on the inside of this. If you can't sew through it, don't put it in the middle. Um, I'm using a, a sharp needle and I'm using a fine needle. So I'm using a size 75 um, um, sharp needle and I'm using an all-purpose thread. The thread color, you can be as creative as you want to with that. Remember, it's not going to show out that much. So let's just sew right along over the top and sew our little sequence in place. Now, I hope you can see, I wasn't super careful with the size of these two. In fact, I made them really, really generous. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew them together using the technique that I used to sew those other two pieces together. And I will have a lot of waste scrap from the seam. I'm totally okay with that. Because quite frankly, that waste scrap goes into the next one of my layered projects. And I can just keep going crazy, crazy, crazy and layering stuff in there. The extra layer of sheer fabric really add extra dimension to the to the visual that you're going to get. So now let's finish that one seam. So here it is. I'm going to bring it over. Now you decide which side you want to sew it to. It's okay. What I've done is I've taken the machine, I've put it on a straight stitch and I can move the needle position. So for example, when I'm sewing, I can keep this one edge right here, right next to the foot. And I can move that needle position over if I want to, to get it right along this, the, uh, the edge of that serger stitch. Now, when I'm doing that, I don't necessarily have to stitch over there. I can if I want to. And this is going to look like a flat filled seam. That's the seam that you'd find on the side of your pair of jeans. And it's going to give it that nice tailored look that I want for my curtains. So let's sew this down. So there's that really cool, really elegant seam. Now I used matching thread in the serger. What if I used real, I put the stitch length really close together and I used a black thread? Wouldn't I kind of get kind of a stained glass look? Wouldn't that be spectacular? So now here are these two put together and notice the edges, they're all kind of crazy. Let me bring this one piece over and I'm going to give you a visual. Here's this. What I'm going to do is when I sew these pieces together, I'll put right sides together. Line everything up, draw my line, and the serger is going to cut off all of that extra waste. And I'm going to get just an elegant seam as this is. And I, because I can see through the fabrics, I can line everything up in square. That's pretty cool, right? So now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk you through how I'm going to finish off this curtain. I'm going to show you the curtain. I'm going to add a little bit extra to it. But let's talk a little bit about curtains in general. So what a curtain is, is it's a piece of fabric that's hanging. But if you notice on the bottom of the curtain, the hem that's on the bottom, that is generously, uh, usually very generous. More generous than you have on a piece of clothing. Have you ever wondered why? 
Well, that extra piece of fabric on the bottom is extra weight on the curtain. In fact, some curtains even have weights on the bottom of them as well, and it helps it hang. So what's going to happen is I'm going to do a, a bigger hem on the bottom of my curtain, and we talk to you about doing the sides, and we'll actually see my magic sunshine curtains because I'm almost done. I have a few panels to put together, and then I'll meet you at the cutting table, and I'm going to show you how I do that hem and the pocket on the top and I'd love to show you that garment I made using all kinds of sheer fabrics with a bunch of stuff in so I'll meet you over there <laughs> so here's my magic sunshine curtain um, it's gotten pretty big but I wanted to make sure that you saw how I put the pieces together those panels together uh, and I do want to talk about stitching down the sides and doing the hem and the casing on the top let me show you how I put those pieces together though here's the two that I did and um, you can see that these edges, they aren't really very straight at all. I just, I'm totally okay with that. These fabrics are sheer, so what I can do is I can make sure that everything matches up really, really well. I can take my ruler, which is here, I can line it up, and I can make sure that everything is straight. If I have to match seams, I match seams, right? So I take it there, I draw my line, and just like I put these pieces together, I do the serge, and then I sew them down, and I can get absolutely straight lines, which is really cool, right? So, oh, and I forgot to mention, Mylar makes a great addition. You can see through it, but it gives you that sparkle that magic curtains, quite frankly, need. Okay, now let me talk about the hem and the casing and the sides. Now on the sides of my curtain, it's going to be the sheer fabric. One thing I haven't mentioned, sheer fabric is squirrely, it wants to move, and it wants to ravel. So something to think about is you're going to have to take these edges of the curtain. You can kind of see it raveling right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them up and I'm going to turn them up again, and I'm going to sew them down. Now, I may want to come in and take my serger and do a stitch right along the edge as if I was joining two pieces, but I'm just going to be sewing right along that edge. Now, I want to recommend to you that don't let that be your final edge. If you do do the serged edge, which is great, it stops the raveling, it gives you that nice dark look on the side, gives you a perfect quarter inch to turn under. Don't just leave that because what can happen is the edge of the curtain needs to be a little bit more solid, just like that hem does. So I would serge along the edge, then turn it over and stitch it down just like I did the other edges. Got it? Let's talk about the hem because there's a really cool way to finish off the hem. I'm going to do my sides. What I've done is taken a, a little bit more opaque piece of sheer fabric for the bottom and I'm going to use the same fabric for the casing on the top and I've just serged the two pieces together. Now I am not going to stitch that down like this because I want to show you kind of a cool trick. So this is the, the same thing you would do on the edge of a pillowcase as well. So I'm going to take this and I have this hem piece on the bottom. Here's my curtain. I'm going to take my curtain and I'm going to literally hold it all up and have it on the inside of my hem. And when I take this up just like this, I can sew it down, pull everything out, and this whole seam is going to pull to the inside as well. So can you see how that works? You take everything, you put it on the inside, lightweight sheer fabric so it's going to fit. I can sew right along there, then pull the curtain out, and this whole bottom seam totally hidden in. So that's kind of a fun way to do that. I'll do the casing on the top the same way. So it'll be nice, elegant, finished off. I'm going to hang the curtains in the window. I'm going to put them on my curtain rod. Just a, just a curtain rod that fits on the inside. So it's basically just a small curtain rod. I just need a casing for that, a deeper hem on the bottom. I want the hems to be nice and flat on the side, and I should have a pretty nice little curtain if I do say so myself. I'll put the picture of the finished curtain in the handout so you can see the light coming through. It's a little bit later in the afternoon right now. I'm going to wait till the morning to take that picture so that you can see all the magic sunshine coming through. 
but I wanted to share with you this garment I made and it's kind of fun. You can take this technique of sandwiching things together and you can take it a little bit too far if you ask me. This is two pieces of sheer fabric. I put stuff in the middle and then I just embellished and embellished and embellished it. I did embroidery on it. I put beads on it. In the middle all kinds of fun fabrics that are sandwiched between those two layers and it did turn out pretty nice. I might have went a little bit over the top but you can see tons of tons of a showcase for stitching and it's just well quite frankly it's two sheer curtains that I made a neat garment out of. So this two pieces of netting and I put stuff in the middle and sewed it down and made my own fabric. So <laughs> Serger is really going to help you tame those sheer fabrics. You can take some sheer fabrics. You can make something pretty amazing out of them. So I'm going to shoot it off to George. He's going to probably tell you a little bit more about that Baby Lock Celebrate Serger. Don't forget that Vesta that I sewed it on. I can also do embroidery. So I can take everything. I can take sheer fabrics and really take them to the next level. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make yourself some magic sunshine curtains or make some for a little girl. Oh my gosh, wouldn't it be a great, a great addition to a little kid's room? Could send it off to George? Thanks for watching. And I think I'm gonna watch some cat TV. Thanks, Kathy. Once again, that was an incredible presentation. Don't forget to click on the link and download the notes for Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy. Now, Babylock invented the serger back in 1967, and throughout the years, they've had many innovations that have separated them from all others. The Babylock Celebrate is one of their most popular models. It has their original jet air threading that threads both loopers with a burst of air. It also has a needle threader that's very easy to work with. It can sew on all kinds of fabric because of the differential feed. You can even gather with it. You can instantly turn a knob and do a rolled edge, which is beautiful for napkins. It also works with a wide variety of thread. Right now, this machine is on sale. It has a regular retail price of $2,499, but we have it on sale for $1,199. But wait, we're offering a bonus for a limited time. Right now, when you purchase the Baby Lock Celebrate, you get 24 spools of Madeira Aero Lock thread, plus a membership to Love of Knowledge. This is where you can get online training in all kinds of techniques on this serger, our sergers in general. If you have any questions on this or other Baby Lock models, give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 or click on the link to order your Baby Lock Celebrate today. Every once in a while, a machine's introduced to the industry that really offers high performance at a great value, and that's the Baby Lock Vesta. Not only is it a great sewing and quilting machine, but it also is an incredible embroidery machine. The embroidery features include a hoop that's larger than 10 by six, and it has a, a wonderful color touchscreen. And look at this beautiful embroidery. Plus it removes the jump stitches, and it even has a special uh, software program that sends your design via Wi-Fi right to the machine. Now, that's not all though. For a sewing machine, it has the automatic fabric sensor that senses fabric from heavy denim to sheer fabric to working with elastic or even uh, a ribbing on a collar like a, a t-shirt knit. But quilting features, it actually will sew in different directions. We have some designs that are incredible for going down the sashing border. It has an automatic quarter inch so you can do your piecing, plus all kinds of wonderful decorative stitches. So as you see, this is an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Now, uh, we have a very special buy on this machine. This machine has a manufacturer suggested list price of $59.99, but right now it's on sale for $39.99, and we're including free shipping across the country, as well as uh, interest-free financing is available. I wanna make some, a very special offer for those who are watching Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy, and that is with a mystery bonus. Why is it a mystery bonus? Well, I don't have a lot of them, but I wanna make sure those who are contacting me, all you have to do is mention Kathy, our Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy, and I have this bonus value that is incredible. So give us a call at 
865-9664 and discover how easy it is to get an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Bye for now. Oh, 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 oh,